This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, I'm going to have Shabbos as we prepare for Shabbos Parshas Behaloischa Habalina Latoiva. We find that at the end of the parsha, the episode of Miriam speaking the Lashon Har about Moshe Rabbeinu, she says, Who does he think he is to be Parish from, from his wife? We're also Nevi'im. Avraham was a Navi, he was never Parish from Sarah. So what Moshe Rabbeinu thinks he's uh, greater. But the truth was, Moshe Rabbeinu was greater. Moshe Rabbeinu was the greatest of all the Nevi'im. He had to be on call 24 hours a day. The Rebbe Hashem could appear to him at any time. As opposed to other Nevi'im who needed to prep themselves for the Nevu'ah. So therefore they were allowed to be with their spouse. And then they wanted to prepare themselves, they could be Tevel. So the Rebbe wanted to show Miriam how important it was for Moshe to be on call 24 hours a day. So the Pasuk says, Vayoymer Hashem Pisoim El Moshe God appeared suddenly. Right? Pisoim. Why suddenly? Why did God appear suddenly? It says Rashi, Pierce Rashi. Nigla Aleim Pisoim. God appeared to them suddenly. Vehim Tmeim Bedarcharats. They were Tamei Bedarcharats. They were, had relations. Vahayut Sayakim Mayim Mayim. They said, oh, water, water. In other words, the Banisham is coming and they're Tamei. Because the Rambam was trying to say, "Look, look what could happen if you're look." That's why Moshe Rabbeinu has to be perished from his wife because I could always appear to him suddenly. So he appeared suddenly. La idea to show sheyafa asa Moshe that Moshe acted correctly. She perished from Aisha. Meachar shashchina niglas alav tader because God appears to him always. Frakt Rav Nassan Gestetner. Oh. Uh, that was uh, one of the Paiskim when uh, he wrote Shas Shivas to Hiras Nasan. He wrote a sefer on Chumash to Hiras Nasan, and he says, "Wait, wait a second. When does somebody cry out, water, water? When do you scream, water, water? When there's a fire, what are you crying for? That someone should bring the water. But if you're tummy, what do you mean, water, water? You got to go to the mikvah. You can't have some water, water. What someone's gonna spritz you here? Water here? You know? What someone's gonna pour a bottle of water on you? What do you mean, water, water? Go to the mikvah. I mean, water, water. Didn't have the bear Miriam? Yes, so go to the bear Miriam. Go there. When he's extremely thirsty, he says, uh, Water. I mean, they bring me water. But if you need to go to the water, you would. So, the Gemara and Shabbos says that a Mayan ha metal tel is tahar. A movable mikvah could be metariu. Says so, the Gemara, what's a movable mikvah? Be'er oh. shel Miriam. Says Rashi, the Be'er Shel Miriam was Mezgalgel by Yisrael. It was like a moving, it was like a mikvah on wheels. I don't think, you know, they have that yet. They have, you know, mitzvah tanks. I don't think they have mikvah on wheels. But the mikvah of Be'er Shel Miriam was mikvah on wheels. So in other words, Mayim Mayim, bring the mikvah of Miriam. The Be'er Shel Miriam could come to them. Fine. Now, so that, that's a very interesting, uh, um, unusual word and expression of Pisan, that God came to them suddenly. I don't think we find that anywhere else in the Chumash, that God came to anybody suddenly. But that's Rashi's chat. God came suddenly so that they recognize why Moshe Rabbeinu has to be Tahar at all times. Didn't they draw each Sheva from that well? Water Maybe it made rounds. It made rounds. It was like you know the milk truck. Only one that that was the bear room that had to take care of the whole. You mean could it did the bear did the bear break off into different parts? I don't know exactly. see them though. Yeah, every every shevet had its own hidurim in the in the mikvah maybe. Okay, Rabbeinu Bechayi says a different reason why God appeared suddenly. Look at Rabbeinu Bechayi on the third line. V'yesh mafarshim pisaim kedei shelo yashuvu. God appeared suddenly to Miriam and Aaron so that they should not have time to do tshuva. Why? Why would God not want Miriam and Aaron an opportunity to have tshuva, to do tshuva? Because by speaking out against Talmud Chacham, it's not just a sin, it's a desecration of God. Anyone who disparages prophets, Tamir Chachamim, Ke'ilu Medaber B'Shechina, it's like speaking against God. The Chilol Hashem Hu Mino Averos Hachamurois and desecrating God's name is like one of the strictest Aver Shema Akvim Es Hatshuva V'zehu Lashon Pisaim This is what it means suddenly. Kaidem She Yashuvu B'Tshuva God did not give Miriam Amen Probably Tzadikim like Miriam and Aryan after Miriam spoke she probably would have felt in her Neshama she did an Avera and she would have done the Tshuva immediately. God, as soon as she did the Avera God jumped on them. No, what do you do? 
What do you mean? Give her a second. Maybe she'll do tshuva. No. When someone does chil Hashem, the Rebbe Hashem does not afford that opportunity. Does make it impossible, but doesn't give the extra siyata deshmaya. We know, by the way, just as a side point, chil Hashem is a very severe avera to the point where the uh, Gemara in Yuma, the Pevav, talks about the four levels of sins. If someone is over an ase, you do tshuva, immediate kapara. If someone is over a lav, you need tshuva and Yom Kippur. If someone's over a lav, sheish kares, you need tshuva, Yom Kippur, yisurim. But chilol Hashem, no kapara until the Yom Amisa. However, some Sofer says that if a person rectifies in a corresponding way to his Avera, in other words, you're Mechal Hashem, but if you rectify that by being, being Mechadish Hashem, so then that obviates the need for... Isn't that a form of Tshuva? No, Tshuva is... is tshuva is... Charata, vi, uh, charata. But, but if I do Charata and Mechadish Hashem... No, forget about Mechadish Hashem. Normally Tshuva is just three things. Aziva Sachet, Charata, and Vidoy. So here, but, but that's not enough for Chal Hashem. For Chal Hashem you need Misa. So therefore, but if a person... Well, what, saying, what if you're Mechadish Hashem? Yeah? You, you were Mechal Hashem. You, you were over. Me, Mechadish Hashem is not Shuva. But, but doesn't it obviate the... No, the you still have to... No. no? The things don't... Mitzvahs don't cancel no, out. Offset. There's no offset. There's no canceling out. You do an Aver, you get punished. You do a Mitzvah, you get reward. Mitzvahs but. don't... But, if you did do Shuva... And your Mekadosh Hashem, so that removes the necessity for for Misa. Misa. That removes. So that's what it means in Gemara Shabbos. Who says that? Chasam Seifer. That if someone is answers Amini Hishmei Rabba B'Chol Koychay, they rip up your Gzar Din. What does that mean? They rip up the Gzar Din. The Gzar Din of Misa that was on a person from B'Chol Hashem. But if you say Amini Hishmei Rabba, which is a Kiddush Hashem, so that removes the necessity to have the the additional factor of. Misa. Says Ramban. So, so far we have two Pshatim and Pisayim. One is God appeared suddenly to Miriam so that they realize why Moshe Rabbeinu has to be on call all the time because Hashem could come to him suddenly. Number two, Rabbeinu Bechai, Hashem didn't want to give them the opportunity to do tshuva. Says Ramban, the word Pisayim does not mean suddenly. It comes from the Pasuk, Eidus Hashem Ne'amana Machimas Pesi. I know a guy, he, a guy has an office on, on his door. He says, uh, Shemer Psalm Hashem. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, Machimah, what's a pesi? A fool. <laughs> Miriam and Aaron, Kiviachal, if we could say such a thing, we're like Pesan. Why? Because Ribbonshim doesn't just suddenly appear to someone on the caliber of Miriam and Aaron. They need to prepare themselves. So, why did Hashem appear to them? Because Moshe was there. And in the Zuchus of Moshe, God appeared to them even though they were like Pisayim. They were like on a very low level. Says Ramban. Look in Ramban. Moshe wasn't actually with them. The Navua came to all three together. Vitam Pisayim. What does it mean, Pisayim? Shalohayu be'isa he knows them libam. Um, they at that time did not really pay attention or have in mind Nevoah. This came in the honor of Moshe without preparing themselves. Ki pisayim, the word Pisayim means something that you didn't think about. The root of it is Pesi. By the way, I heard most of these Marmachonis many years ago from Rabbi Obam, this particular shir. So, so far we have three explanations for this time. What are they? Number one. Number one. Rashi's chat, right? That Hashem appeared to Miriam suddenly so that they learn what? That Hashem uh, must has to be on duty all the time. Number two, Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar, not to give them an opportunity to do tshuva. And number three, what? The Ramban's chat. A lashon of Pesi. Okay. Now, the Pasuk says that after Miriam spoke about um, Moshe, Vayishma Hashem, God heard. Why does it say Vayishma Hashem? As opposed to who? 
as opposed to Moshe. God heard the Lashon Hara. Moshe made himself as if he didn't hear. Why? So you criticize me? Well, so I deserve it. What's the big deal? Not a... I said, I, this doesn't bother me. He said, no, no. God heard and got angry. This is another pshat in Pisan. It says it's Sarah Hamar. Sarah Hamar, Rabbi Avram Saba. Ram Saba is one of the Gerushe Svarad. One of, um, he had a very, very tragic life. Rav Ram uh, Saba. His children were kidnapped in front of his eyes and forcibly baptized. And all of his farm he had to bury, and he lost forever all of his manuscripts. And he had to rewrite the Tzvar Hamar from memory after he fled Spain and then Portugal. He says, the Indian, you know why God appeared to them suddenly? Because the Ibanisham didn't want Miriam and Aaron to think, God, who told you that we spoke Lashon Har about Moshe? <laughs> oh, Moshe told you. So Hashem appeared to him suddenly so that they shouldn't think that Moshe reported on them. He didn't, he, as soon as they said it, Hashem came running in. Oh, what do you do? What do you do? Why? Why? Because Hashem didn't want them to think that Moshe tattled on them. So that's why Hashem came suddenly. And would Moshe do such a thing? No, but he didn't want them to suspect, right? Okay. Right, so we have four Pshatim and Pisaim. One is to teach to teach them that Moshe has to be ready on call. Number two, not to give them a chance to do tshuva. Number three, Lashon of Pesi. Number four, what? So that you should not suspect Moshe of tattling. Fine. Now, it says, right after he spoke the Lashon, they spoke the Lashon, the Pesach says, Beha'ish Moshe. On of Ma'id, very unusual expression. Viha ish Moshe. It should says, U Moshe Ha'ish. Moshe the man. What the man Moshe? So the Shach Alatar, Shach Alatar is one of the Gurei Ha'ariza, one of the Tamidim of the Ari. Not to be confused with the Shab Siakoyin, the author of the Shach on the Yardea. He says, it in, after the Lashon Hara, it sticks in the word Viha ish. In other words, it says, the Lashon Hara. Vayishma Hashem. Then it says, Vihaish Moshe. It interrupts with the word Vihaish between the Lashon Hara and Moshe. Why? To show that Moshe made himself like he didn't hear it. He separated himself from it. God heard Vihaish. That's, that's like an interruption, a hefsik, in between the Lashon Hara and Moshe. To make Moshe Rabbeinu made himself as if he didn't hear. And if you take a look at the word Anav, how do you spell Anav? Ayin, Nun Vav. Ayin, the Milua is Ayin Yud Nun. Nun is Nun Vav Nun. Vav is Vav Yud Vav. Gematria 248. To show, you know why Moshe didn't want to listen? Because Moshe didn't want to be over the Aveira of listening to Lashon Hara. Why? Because he didn't want to be play game in any of his avarim, He wanted his avarim to be complete. Now, you know, there's a famous story about the Chavetz Chaim, which I never believed. Mm-hmm. Now, Why? Yeah. There's a story about the Chavetz Chaim that somebody, uh, that somebody was once um, speaking highly about the Chavetz Chaim, and the Chavetz Chaim said, eh, eh, whatever, he's not so good. And the guy said, what? You know, and the guy punched the Chavetz Chaim. Right? <laughs> and the Chavetz Chaim said, you see from here, you're not even allowed to speak Lashon Hara, about yourself. So if you look in the Kol Kisri Chavetz Chaim, there's a different version there, Bechal no Shachis, to what I just said, right? But this is something they teach you in Yeshiva, right? You can't speak Lashon about yourself. I think there are ayahs from the Sefer Chavetz Chaim, you're allowed to speak Lashon about yourself. Because Chavetz Chaim brings down a halacha, that if someone tells you Lashon Hara about himself, yourself, and someone else, Let's say I tell Joe, Lashon about me and Yanko Belas. So you can't believe, so Chavaz Chaim says, you can't believe me what I say about Rabbi Yanko, because that's Lashon Hara. But you're allowed to believe me what I said about myself. So wait a second, if you're not allowed to speak Lashon Hara about yourself, so then why are you allowed to believe me what I say about myself? So I always thought that the halach is, you're allowed to speak Lashon Hara about yourself. I, the story, first of all, I heard 
B'Shem Rav Miller, Gedolim stories are mostly not true. He said 90% of them are not true even. But whatever. You know, it's just a nice story. But you see from the Shach al that Moshe didn't want to hear the Lashon Hara. Why not? But it's about himself. You can't listen to the Lashon Hara about yourself? Unless you say, no, really, Meikar had then you're allowed to. It's not a halacha, but it's like a, a madriga not to let your ears hear something that which, which should not be spoken. Okay. It's not that you're not allowed to hear. You're making this guy. He's not one to talk to. to okay, but the Chavetz Chaim says... Um, you know what I'm saying? I hear, but, but she was talking to Aaron, so... I'm saying, but it was for myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. When you say myself, you're, not, you're causing this guy. You're, you're, causing, you're causing the guy. Him, okay. Okay, whatever. Okay, now God wants to speak to Miriam and Aaron. Yeah, he said, "What are you doing?" He spoke to about Moshe, but Hashem uses the words "Tzu Shalashdechem." All three of you leave, go out, so I could speak to you. Can I, can I have a chumash, please? Question is, why would Hashem tell Moshe to go out if he's only speaking to Miriam and Aaron? Right? If you look at the end of the parasha, Hashem gets upset at, at Miriam and Aaron. So ha- Hashem wants to speak to them. So he says, All three of you go out. Why would Hashem tell Moshe to go out? He's not going to speak to Moshe. He's only going to speak to Miriam and Aaron. Sammy wanted Moshe to be there. What he says to them. What? He wanted Moshe to be right? there. What like he this. was saying to them. You all three of you go out. They all three went out, and once they went out, Vayir Hashem and it stood Pesach Oil. Vayikra Aaron and Miriam. He called only Tara and Miriam, and then the two went out. You hear what's going on? First, he says all three of you leave. They all three went out. Then the Amod Anon called specifically on Aaron and Miriam. The Amod Anon wasn't there. Isn't your Amor Amon staying there all the time unless they're moving? So, what? This is a special, uh, special uh, Amor in the, in the Mishkan itself. The question is, why would God call three of them and then only speak to two of them? So it says the, the Medrash that the reason why Hashem wanted Mir- Moshe to go out also, even though He didn't speak to him, is so that He should be prepared he to daven for Miriam as yeah. soon as as soon as what? As soon as uh, she was, she got the Tzaras. The Svarno says, like Rabbi Ankel from Hillcrest, that why all three of them? Because Hashem wanted to see, wanted to show Moshe how Hashem's chesed, that he's makvid on Moshe's cover. Ramban says, that Hashem wanted Moshe to be there to see how Hashem is Makana for his covered, and that Hashem is not willing to be Moichel until, until Moshe Davins. However, the Ran, in the Drasha Haran, look at number 12, offers another Pshat, and that is like this. Look at number 12. L'fikoch ner be'enai, ki ha'kriya l'moshe ha'isa ha'chreches be'enyin, that God did need to call Moshe. Because Moshe and Aaron and Miriam were not able to receive Nevoah. They did not have the connection. They, did not, they were not connected to God. So therefore Hashem had to be Mitzdarif Moshe with them because once the Nevoah is pouring down on Moshe, it could pour down on Moshe and through Moshe pour down to Aaron and Miriam as well. Even though they're not Roy. In other words, they did not have the conduit to be able to speak to Rebbe Hashem. But Moshe is there. Moshe is like the antenna. Miriam Aaron did not have an antenna. Moshe is like, so why does Moshe have to be there? Not because God's going to speak to him. He's the antenna. And through him, God could speak to Aaron and Miriam. I think it's a little different. Pitan, in other words, Aaron and Miriam had to prepare for Nebuah. Moshe was able okay, to right. Right, 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 right. Well, no, right. It doesn't mean they can never speak to Hashem, but on a moment's notice, on a moment's notice, this is what Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu with the Shivim Zakenim. I'm going to come down. I'm going to speak with you. And you're going to, I'm going to give from my spirit. That's on you and put it on them. The uncle says, the Arabi. What does this mean? In other words, Hashem says, I can't just go speak to the Zakenim. They're not Roy. But I'm going to speak to you. And through you as the medium and the conduit, through you, I will be able to rest my spirit on the Shivim Zakenim as well. 
So says the Ran, Abu Mitzad Shahisa Shivas Vhala Moisha, Hoisa Numshah is Gama Layam, even though they were not Luchan. The Khain Zeh Hadarah Benise Hatar Bin Flaisa. They have to still do what they have to do. Yeah, they have to do what they have to do, but they still need this conduit. And it says around this is the way with all the miracles of the Torah. You need some kind of small thing to be the conduit through which the miracle would happen. Okay. Says the Ran an amazing thing. The Yerali Aid. Kimalavad Hishtatif Hanavi Yam Navi. Aside from the fact that Navi B could gain prophecy, even though Navi B is unworthy, through Navi A. Or you have a Chacham who on his own cannot achieve Chachma, but he gets it through the spillover of the other Chacham. Yesh Bazein Yenacher. For who Shein Safek Sharoi Shanamin. There is no doubt that we believe. Shekamoy Shabazman Shabes Migdash Kayam. Just like when the temple stood, there's no question that when the Beis Hamikdash stood, it was a medium of prophecy and wisdom. That through the medium of the Beis Hamikdash, Chachma, Nevua, prophecy filtered down to the world and spilled over to the rest of Klal Yisrael. Cain Roy. So that, what do we see from there? That a location can be a conduit. For the entire people. Just like a, a place could be a conduit for the people, a tzaddik or a tamad chacham could be a conduit that the Rebbe Hashem is not going to give chachma to this year and that year and that year. But once the Rebbe Hashem is sending chachma to this tzaddik, through him he could be the medium and the conduit to allow other yidin to have chachma. He says, Prophets, and righteous individuals could be, if they're prepared to receive the bounty of Chach Then through, if you have an Avadi Yosef in your generation, or Rebel Yoshev in your generation, through Reb Avadia, through Rebel Yoshev, and now we don't have them anymore, through Reb Chaim Kinevsky, God gives Chachma to him, and he's the medium with which we get it. That's why when a Gadol leaves us, it's a, it's a void that is un, unsufferable. How can we tolerate it? We, you know how much we lost? The connection is gone. The antenna is gone. Now, but, don't think, now even if you never, and he says, even if you never saw Rabbi Vadya, and you never saw Rabbi Yasha, still, if you're in their generation, the antenna is there. You don't have to see the antenna to get the, the to get the, um, the feel. Signal. signals. You don't have to see it. It's there. But what you do have to do is you got to turn on your device. He says, Only those Jews that prepare themselves. In other words, if a person puts in the requisite effort and preparation through tzaddikim and gedolim, they will gain a, a overflow. But the fact that Tamil Chacham are in our generation, shame Atzmam Kumaya Mikdash, Hamakudash. Says Ram he says, You can have a tzaddik that while they're alive, they're connected to Ibn Shalom, they're like the Ma'in for the Shina. Says Ran amazing thing. Since if it's when Sadiqim are alive, they are a conduit, they are a medium, they are an antenna for God's wisdom. And through them, the rest of the generation that prepared could achieve Chachma also. Certainly! Now listen to this. This is very important. If a Chacham can be a conduit for the rest of the people who prepare themselves, certainly he's a conduit for those who make themselves close to the Gadol, and join up with him. Ah, and now he says a big Chiddush. We know many, many G'daylem say, how could you go to a kever to pray to a tzaddik? It's a violation of one of the 13 principles of faith. So how do you go to a kever? Says Iran, you're not praying to the tzaddik, chas v'shalom, heaven forbid. What are you doing? Since the tzaddik, when he was alive, was an antenna, 
Through him, Chachma came to us. Ruchnias uh, um, came to us. So even Lachar Moisai, since his guf was a conduit, his guf could continue to be a conduit. So it's a Makam Kadesh. It's a very, it's a high frequency Wi Fi area to be able to come close to Rebbe He says, Not only when they're alive, even after they die. Makaymois Kivraisayan. The place of their burial, Ruuyan Lihimatsay Hashef Hashem B'Tzad Me'at Sadim. There's some dimension of Chachma and Ruach Hakodesh in that area. Ki Atzmosayim, their bones. Asher Kvar Hoyu Kalim. Asher Kvar Hoyu Kalim. They have been vessels when they were alive. Lacha Aleim Hashem Alaki. They have divine bounty. Adayin Nisha Bahem and Amal Ba'Kovet Sheyasu. This was that. Um, they still retain this ability to be conduits of Chachma and Ruchnias. And therefore, that's the union of going to Kivrei Tzadikim, not to dive into the Tzadik, but since the Tzadik was a medium and conduit when he was alive, he continues to be. Yeah. Rabbi Isa, I'll tell you another thing now that we're on the topic of utilizing Tzadikim as a conduit to be banished on the Chassam Soifer brings down a Segula Nifla to dive in within the Dalad Amis of a Tzadik. You know, you, it, Davin, you know, you go to a gala, you park yourself next to him to Davin Mincha, why? You're using his antenna. He already has the, the you know, the he's frequency. A, he's a booster cable. Yeah, he's already, the, the frequency booster is... signal. But, but the signal, signal. You get a very strong, you know, sometimes on your phone, when you're in the elevator, the elevator, you know, no, you're out of the zone, you're out of the... So what do you do? You, you the quick, first thing you do, you run to a window, right? right? So the tzaddik is like, you know, a very strong uh, signal over there. So one last thing, Rabbi Yisai, right? <laughs> 4G network, right? So uh, one last thing. The Mar Masech the Brachas asks, Moshe Rabbeinu says the following. Moshe Rabbeinu says, The Atta Yisrael, Ma Hashem Lekecha Shoyel Mimcha, Ki Yim What does God ask of you? Only to fear him. So Gemara asks, "Vichi Yira Moses is a trustee. Is fear a small thing?" Gemara says, "In Lagave Moshe Moses is a trustee. For Moshe Rabbeinu is a small thing." So the question is, Shkayach for Moshe is a small thing, but for the Jews is a big thing. Imagine if Rabbi Vadi Yosef would come and say, "What does God want you to do? All He wants you to do is memorize Shalos Tshuvas Chasam Seifer." Said Chacham Avadi, "Is that a small thing? Yeah, for me it's very small. Yeah, but you're talking to us." Right, do you understand who you're talking to? I don't care if it's easy for you. You're talking to me. For me, it's very hard. So what's the Gemara saying? Yeah, Moshe is talking to the Jews. He's saying, all God asks of you is to fear me. And so making it sound like fear is a very small thing. And what's the answer? Yeah, it's small for Moshe. But for the Jews, it's very hard. And Moshe so doesn't understand it. Says, the Dubna Magid, you're right, it's hard for the Jews. But if it's easy for Moshe... All you need to do is hang around Moshe, and Moshe's Yer Shemayim will spill over to you. You're right, for you it's very hard. If you're going to sit in your house and try to get Yer Shemayim, it's very hard. But for Moshe, it's easy. So what you need to do is tap into Moshe, hook up with Moshe, connect to Moshe, and his Yerah will influence you. His Chachma will influence you. Says the Dubna Magad, I once asked the Vilna Gain, and this is Mamish something, Devarim Ruyim Lamisha Amrai. As he asked the Vilna Gain, he writes over here, look at number 14, he writes this in Parshas Tazria and in Parshas Ekev. Look on the second line, the second uh, um, paragraph. Vani biyoisi be Vilna. Says the Dubna Magda, I was once in Vilna. Eitz al Moiri, by my Rebbe, who Rabbeinu Akadosh Hagoyna Chosid, Rabbeinu Eliyahu, mi Vilna, Chusa Yagin Aleinu, Sha'alti Yaspev Lema. I asked him, Eze derech Yavai Hashafa. How could you influence other people? How does a tzaddik, a tzaddik, influence other people? So I, you would think, oh, if he's a good speaker, if he knows how to speak, if the guy is mumbling, forget it. The guy has to be a speaker, he has to be dramatic, yeah? Says the Vilna Gain, and this is very royal, Lamisha Amra, the Vilna Gain was not a big baldarshan. He says there's only one way to influence. You can't influence someone. You can't, you're going to tell someone, Hey you, wake up early, be the first one to shachas, learn the kavah. The guy's going to say, yeah right, you know, take a hike. 
How do you influence someone? There's only one way to do it. Vilna Gaon says it's like two cups, an inner cup and an outer cup. And the more water you pour into the inner cup, the more it will overflow into the surrounding cup. The more a tzaddik fills himself up with Torah, Yer Shammai, Amidois, Taibais, it will naturally spill over to those he's associated with. You see that silver becher, you know, and somebody's spouse? Right, right, right. <laughs> exactly. So therefore, when the Gemara asks, is your Shammai a small thing? The Gemara says, yeah, to Moshe it's a small thing. Yeah, but what, what good is that going to do everybody else? And therefore, everybody else who associates with Moshe, it will also be easy, it will also be easy for them. That's what we learn from why did Rabbi Hashem have to call out Moshe? He was only speaking to Miriam and Aaron. The answer is, Moshe was the antenna. When you associate with Moshe Abeno, you're able to achieve levels that perhaps the person would not be able to achieve on their own. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.